OK, guys. Um, so uh, I was, uh, Sanjeev told me that I have about 15 minutes, so I'm going to try to go through this. Um, I had a couple of things that I wanted to show. I prepared some uh, slides to show you basically the topics that we are teaching. And I'm not going to go in depth because all of you are teaching similar topics. Uh, and I myself benefited a lot from the insights of other colleagues in the field, especially, so for example, Gord shared a lot of materials with me. Uh, uh, so kind of, and we are iterating a lot on the development there. So, uh, okay, there we go. It's actually, it doesn't have a lot of radius. Um, so first of all, the course, course objectives. Oh, what is it doing? Okay. So I actually, let me actually talk from here. I'll talk so that it, we move faster. So um, we, we structure the course around, like all of you, fundamental concepts and hands-on tools. And the hands-on tools are around storage and extraction. So a little bit, um, kind of how do you manage database? How do you query information out of a database? Then how do you visualize information? How do you analyze information? So very simply, uh, three areas. We only use open source software that is compatible with everything Windows, Linux, uh, OS X, so that all the students can take that, put that on their computers, and work with it. Um, so we have 12 lectures plus one midterm plus one final, so 13 lectures. So kind of, it's a short half semester course. So it limits us in terms of what we can do, but we try to do a lot. So some of the topics, I'm going to just go through them very quickly. So uh, we teach digital innovation transformation and ubiquity, and that's how we start, and actually, Piggyback writing on Vijay's um, uh, kind of a presentation. We also introduced GE and Predix system exactly in that lecture in the very beginning to show so, uh, how do we do it. So we have a, we ask students to read the HBR article. Then we get into networks and platform economics and ecosystems. And then there, so the reason why I'm going fast is because these slides are online. So you and the syllabus, so you can see all the cases. So I'm not going to dwell on them that much. Then. We get into the third lecture, which is social network, social media, and user-generated content, and then kind of the power of social media. So starting from the old stories of United Broke My Guitar to more recent stories, right? So and then we talk about network analysis and visualization. So now that you have users in social media, social networks, they communicate, how do we look at this? So the way we start is kind of we try to get all of you know these things. This is uh, baby graph theory. It's kind of centrality, uh, closeness centrality. But we try to ask students, before we show this to them very quickly, so we have a network of people. We have the Twitters, the Facebooks. We want to start a viral campaign. Where do you start? Hands up? Yeah. Yeah, so exactly. So uh, where do you start? You start pretty much, uh, most of the students say, the node with the most connections. That's kind of the default, how the students are uh, wired to think, a lot of them when they come. And we say, so pretty much, we look at B versus E. If you start at B, very simple. One tweet uh, campaign gets you to the first uh, contacts. If they retweet in turn, it gets uh, another node. So it takes two more iterations to cover the entire network. If you start at E, which is, has a better closeness centrality, one tweet and only two actions, you covered everything. So now students say, aha. And I'm not saying this, uh, all of you know this thing. This is not, nothing complex. It was kind of, once you got the students out of the mode that the node with the most connections is the most important node, that opened their eyes. So you can get into network analysis. Um, so I use a tool called Gephi, which is open source. Um, and that's how I, uh, we visualize networks. And it helps us to plot a lot of things. So I'm going to switch now to my laptop. And I'm going to show you a couple of things that we can do. And this tool allows us also, so I hope it's going to work fine, uh, to connect and stream live Twitter, uh, so kind of tweets that contain certain hashtags. So let's say you, want, you see uh, some event that's going on, like let's say a sports event or a political debate, and you can actually get, uh, you put the hashtags that you're trying to follow, and it will stream them. Um, OK. So first of all, I'm going to show you something very quickly. Uh, I'm going to open. Um, and this one. I'm going to open a complex network just to show you the beauty of kind of how, how this uh, software operates a little bit, but then I'm going to get into a Facebook network. So the first network that I'm going to show you is the power grid. Uh, so that's not necessarily a social network, but welcome to the power grid. So when you see this kind of, it's not 
very useful to see like a block, but when you try to layer it, so to properly use a layout, so let's say we have a variety of layouts in this software, and it's going to show you, uh, so I'm going to choose one of them. So very quickly, it starts arranging the network, and the students kind of see immediately how you start unfolding and how do you start seeing microclusters and so on, immediately how things look like. So now, uh, I'm going to stop this, um, and I'm going to switch into a Facebook uh, network very quickly. And I wanted to show you, so this had a lot of nodes, so you could see the other networks immediately, the layout pops up, so you kind of, you, you don't see. So the idea to visualize, this, was, this is visualization. I'm going to get there. So a little bit of kind of how, what are the important nodes, how do you see them, how do you recognize them when you can't do eyeballing very quickly. So how do you render a network, how do you kind of see connections and so on. So this is a visualization tool. So this is not necessarily, it's, it has metrics, so it gets into analytics. So as I said, I have, we have data management, visualization, and analytics, the three components we are doing. I'm getting there, yeah, yeah, so def definitely, yeah. So, um, so now I'm going to just close this, and I'm going to go to, uh, I'm just going to open a Facebook network. So this I got it from, so Stanford has online, at SNAP Stanford, it has a whole bunch of Facebook uh, uh, graphs, so micro networks from there. Yes? Yes. I'm going to show you that too, how, how we stream, kind of we put some hashtags and it gets you in real time who are the folks around the world that talk about those topics. And we can start building a graph out of that. So that's also part of the assignment for the students. Um, some of the students ran out of memory very quickly because they ran it during a football game and just people love to talk about that back and forth. So before they realized and turned it off, they ran out of memory so it kept crashing the software. You can, so this is, um, so very quickly, I'm going to do a layout for this. So this is a Facebook network. Um, so it's a micro network of about 500 nodes. I'm going to just uh, kind of uh, do an overlap. And we kind of can see here, so this is, we can see immediately there are some clusters. So now I'm going to stop the formatting and I'm going to, we have here, a whole range of statistics that we can compute. So average degree, minimum spanning tree network, diameter, diameter, and so on. So we can do connected components, many things, right? So with a network diameter, it will not give us only the diameter, but it will give us the betweenness centrality, closeness centrality for every node, everything. And you compute it in one shot. So if we, let's say, compute the network diameter of this network, so I'm going to run this, it's going to ask me whether I want normalized or, no, or not normalized, and it's going to compute it. So you said it finished it very quickly. So these graphs are not that informative, but if we go to data laboratory, so right here, I have information about every node now, and it added the statistics next to every node, so I can sort out now, I can see immediately which is the node with the highest centrality and so on. But still, this is very much like going into tables. How do we visualize it nicely? <laughs> so now, what we can do, so now I have the appearance. And this is kind of where we can start working a little bit with the network. So I'm going to say that pretty much, so uh, I can say, for example, that the nodes by partition, so, so by eccentricity, I can apply some colors to it. I immediately start, you can start seeing groups. You can start seeing, if you do modal, modularity, you can see clusters color differently, and so on. Uh, if I want to do the edge, the, the size of the node, then I can say ranking, and I can say choose an attribute. By between a centrality, let's see which are the nodes that are the largest. So the guys that have brokerage power. So I can start seeing immediately, oh, these are the guys that are very important there, right? So that they are, they are in between a lot of communication paths, right? So they, they matter a lot. Or the guys with the closeness centrality. We can add things like labor, labels immediately onto it, and then you can say that the labels should be scaled a little bit, so if I go to the label, I'm going to do by ranking, and I'm going to choose the label to be scaled by between a centrality. So that is going to actually get rid of a lot of the labels. It's kind of, I'm going to put it like uh, 10 here. 
So we are going to see some of the labels, and I'm going to make uh, sure this, some of them are smaller. And you kind of start seeing the labels now. Um, they are on particular nodes, but some of them are, have been obscured. So you can start seeing things here. I can rearrange again to be no overlap. Uh, so, so this is a, a little bit of what we can do in terms of visualizing. So these are the nodes you can rearrange. You can say, color more intensely the nodes that have the highest between the centrality, and color the size of the node to be larger for the nodes that have the highest closeness centrality. So a little bit kind of students can start seeing this. Now we can apply some filters, and let's say, wait a minute. I mean, this is still too crowded. So I'm going to go to attributes, and then I, I can choose a range. So I can look at between a centrality, and then I can say, you know what? Don't give me really everything. So start hiding some of the nodes. Really show me the important ones. And I can zoom in very quickly, and I can say, these are the important ones. They are connected, and so on. So we can visualize this. So this is kind of a tool that gets the students to compute some metrics and then see it on the graph how important these metrics are, the closeness, the betweenness, what it matters. So now I'm going to get very quickly to show you the Twitter streamer, because I, I have two more minutes before I have to get into Q&A. Uh, so the Twitter streaming, so I'm going to close this project. I'm going to open a new project. And the Twitter streaming importer, so you have to create a Twitter app. So you, you apply to apps at Twitter. It gives you the tokens, the secrets, and so on. You just plug them in for fields and then those credentials, and pretty much you're connected to the Twitter API. So here I have, I put here at Bezos, hashtag Apple, uh, hashtag Amazon, hashtag mobile. And hopefully if the connection works, I'm going to, you can have the full Twitter network, the hashtag, hashtag network, so how hashtags are connected. Now the hashtags are the nodes, so they are connected if two hashtags show up in a tweet or so on. Right? But I'm going to use the user network. This means the nodes are the users. So if certain hashtags are mentioned in communication between them, it's going to show. Right? So, so hopefully, I, I click Connect. So it takes a little while. I don't know if it's going to pick up anything right now. Uh, so it looks like it's a, yeah, there we go. So all of a sudden, we start seeing in real time. So these are the folks around the world that talk about these things. So if we go to data laboratory, pretty much it's telling us, so these are the users. Some of them, it even tells us metrics like how many friends they have, uh, followers, where they are located even when they are talking about this. And this is generated in real time. So you can start building a graph about the conversations. You have to let it run a little bit more, because if you don't let it run for a good amount of time, when you try to layer the network, it will look like uh, pretty much like stars, right? You have a hub and then kind of all the spokes going around of a person just tweeting around. So you want to allow the other people to start communicating further down the path, the information, and you start having more uh, connected uh, components out there. But you can see how quickly it kind of starts immediately to extract information. So if I go to overview, it kind of starts building networks, and then um, kind of this is one of the assignments for the students. So let this run, and then see who are people that are kind of uh, important in conversations a little bit? And start, can you say something about this? All right? So I'm going to disconnect it. And I'm going to, uh, so I think I have one more minute. So what I want is to switch very, very quickly to the computer. And I want to, so I have lectures also on online search and online mobile and advertising, data analytics with R. Um, and there is a, so then we have SQL normalization. Then we have cr uh, crowdsourcing and the sharing economy. And the case that I wanted to just mention in passing, it's about open source approach. And initially, I was thinking about kind of, there are several cases out there. But what I discovered was a great case, uh, which is the 3D robotics case. And this case helped uh, a lot. So this is a 2015 Berkeley case. So, uh, this is Chris Anderson, who was an uh, editor-in-chief of Wire magazine and so on. And he wrote a number of books. But he got into this. Right now, he's looking at the maker's movement, that we are in the do-it-yourself trend. We learn how to do things. We change things. We tinker around with things. There are open designs out there. We are allowed to ch modify things, manufacture things very easily. So actually, he played with a Mindstorm, with Lego Mindstorm, with his kids, developed a controller for a drone himself at home. Then it occurred to him, wait a minute, I can do this. That was mid-2000, 2007, and so on. He created this community, do-it-yourself drones. 
became the largest community out there for unmanned aerial vehicles for kind of lead, the leading community for sharing information in the open, open source. Um, and from there, he poached talent. So first we have the crowdsourcing. So I'm going to finish uh, just wrapping up this. Uh, I'm not going to go to the rest. So from there, he pulled talent. He started a company. But the company uh, is called 3DR, 3D Robotics. And it creates drones. A lot of the components in the drones are open source. And it has a proprietary software attached to its size scan for businesses. So this case actually contains a lot of these components. And that's why I wanted to showcase it, because it's a good case that brings things together. So it brings the open source software and hardware. So you can get something, but you're allowed to take the blueprints and manufacture it yourself. Crowdsourcing ideation, platform approach. So they actually give you the kit to write your own applications for the drone, if you want. Uh, do it yourself in the maker movement. Tech startup strategies and revenue strategies around open source. So it contains a lot of components. So I thought, and the students really loved it and got into it. So I thought that it was uh, useful information to share about this case. So I'm going to just, uh, and then we have security and privacy. So pretty much this wraps up kind of how we structure our course. And I don't know if I have time for questions right now. One or two questions. So they they didn't develop one uh, yet, they, or they didn't have it, yeah. 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 So that was the other two. Yeah. Yeah. Will do. <laughs> yeah. Thank <laughs> you.